All right, everybody, welcome to the office. So uh, today I'm gonna do a uh, quick review. Well, not that quick, actually. It's a review of the Kobo hardware wallet. Uh, Unstoppable Domains, they reached out to me and they said, hey, Rob, would you like to uh, review these new hardware wallets? I was like, sure, you know, I'll give it a shot. I, uh, I'm always interested in see what's out there. Uh, I just use a Nano Ledger. Seems to work out pretty well for me. So I'll, I'll, I'll give it a roll. And uh, here's the thing. Uh, I'll tell you what I know, I'll tell you what I don't know, I'll tell you what I like, what I don't like. And uh, for this wallet, didn't like it. That, that's just how it is. So I know that the company's probably not gonna be su super happy with me because they didn't really give a great review. But uh, there is some good points uh, throughout the video. First of all, uh, it's super safe. It's air-gapped, so very hard to, uh, to crack that and uh, to, to be hacked would be very difficult. And then second of all, it's pretty cool because you're actually able to use the Unstoppable Domains uh, domain uh, as your Bitcoin address. So that big long Bitcoin address, it's just, you know, for me it's danlikes.crypto. Yours could be joeblow.crypto, whatever it is. So that was pretty cool. Other than that, I uh, had a hard time with it, didn't really like it. But again, uh, it's not about me. It's about what you like and what could be, could serve your purpose. Maybe you're a per big techie person and that's why I left it up. So uh, let's jump into the review. If you like what you see, uh, just put in the comment section, I want a Kobo, C-O-B-O, -O, and we'll do uh, a random drawing. And whoever gets it, uh, this will be drawn by Unstoppable Domains, not by me. Whoever gets it will get the Kobo wallet uh, for free, and also you get $150 credit to use towards Unstoppable Domains. All right, great. So here we have the unboxing for the Kobo vault. This is what it looks like. Comes in a nice little handy box. Pop this sucker open, and you're gonna get two boxes. Two boxes. One is supposed to be the battery, which we have right here. Da da da. And this, of course, is a standard uh, USB. Oh wow, uh, USB C, which is gonna work into my uh, MacBook Pro. So fantastic. So need both those in a bit. Let's see what the actual Hardware wallet looks like, and here's what we got. And then we got something like this, which says, hey, you'll see what you sign. And uh, never have to trust third party again with fully transparent QR code data transmission. Scan with any ordinary QR scanner to view all transaction data in human readable format. As a token of appreciation, here's your support, just 5% off your next order. And of course you can do a scratch off thing and then boom, off you go. Well, great, fantastic. And then here's the actual, wow, this wallet's pretty cool. Looks like it's got a camera on the back and a pretty gigantor screen, so I like that. And then uh, I like this little thing that says here, power button. I mean, in huge letters, so you can't miss that. All right, so uh, take this screen off. Oh, so nice. Okay, well, this is definitely different than my Nano. I'll just tell you that right now. All right, so underneath, got some packaging. Directions in uh, English, and oh, look at this. Warranty card. This looks like a seed phrase, just guessing. And they give you one. Maybe they should give you more than that, I'm just saying. I'm just saying, Kobo. If you want people to actually use this thing, come on. All right, so I will make mention of this. In the very top here is the actual camera, so you can scan the QR codes. This right here is for a fingerprint ID. That's pretty slick. And it tells you the instructions right here. So very interesting stuff. All right, so let's go through this, right? So one, front and back views. Great, got that. Installing the Cobalt Vault mobile app. On your mobile device, scan the QR code or visit the App Store to download and install the companion app. Great. So let's do that right now. All right, let's look for this uh, QR code and bam, there it is. So what's great about this, it'll take you to Kobo.com, except it's like cookies, of course. And then I like this, app download. You can very easily see it right there. And you just click on that, and then off you go to uh, download the actual app. And then let's download on the App Store. I sure like that, pretty simple. I'm going to the right place. I know I'm not getting us uh, hacked or spam or whatever else. All right, let's click on Get and let this download. And let's open it up. All right, so all this stuff we'll do in another step, but uh, there are two parts of this. There is the uh, actual app that you use on the phone, and there is the hardware wallet. Hardware wallet, uh, the one that we just looked at, is only there to sign the transactions. Everything else is done through the app. Uh, this is where you uh, scan 
the QR codes, this is where you broadcast it to the network and everything else. So two pieces and we'll put them together in just a bit. Number three, powering on the cobble bolt. Uh, press and hold the power button for three seconds to run the device. So, so here's what this is all about. So this right here, so this is your, what you can charge to your USB-C. But what it looks like is that there's an actual battery that comes with it. It does not. This is a battery, however, and what's really cool is that I, sometimes I hate things where you have to like slide and everything else and it's really hard, especially people with like uh, poor dexterity, uh, like myself. So this is pretty cool because it just goes like this and it's, it's magnetized. How nifty is that? And these look like probably AAA batteries. Okay, so I'm just gonna actually uh, insert the uh, regular battery that's powered up by the USB and put it in. And what's, like I said, what's great about it, just snaps right in, very sturdy, very easy to take on and off, very nice. And then uh, we'll just turn it on. Because usually they come, you know, pre, pre-charged a little bit to get you going. So uh, let's click on that enormous power button, what they said. And there we are, Kobo Vault. Let me come out here so everybody can see it. I will choose English. What I like about this, of course, is that it's touchscreen. It's very nice. No buttons to, on the side. Uh, I know other ones have it, but uh, it's just uh, pretty nice. And of course it's big, you know, like you can easily see it. I like that part. Ate a lot. Okay, please visit Kobo.com Hardware Wallet Web Authentication. Click on Scan Code Below and scan the QR display on the website and the code display in your Kobo Vault. So let's do that right now. Okay, so here's why we're doing all this stuff. Because when they send you this hardware wallet, they want you to make sure that it's actually an authentic wallet. So if you're buying these things from eBay, then of course you probably want to do this. But if you're getting right from the manufacturer, probably pretty safe. But I'm just going to show you how to do it anyhow. So the first thing is you could type in that long URL or you can just go to Kobo.com. That's C-O-B-O.com. Pretty simple. And click on Kobo Vault. And then underneath here, just click on web authentication. So this is the whole thing. So go through all this, sure, got it. Now I'm gonna click on authenticate. And here's the QR code that we're gonna need in the next step. So let's jump out into a bigger view. What's great about this is that you just click on scan QR code and then it's got a QR code scanner. Please input the verification code. W R J seven C F L and let's see if it's verifiable. Great, your device is success. Okay, so again, if you bought it from the manufacturer, you probably don't need to do that, but it's just a, a secondary way to do it. All right, so success. So now it's going to ask us for a password, and I'll put this in. I just got to tell you, if, if you got fat fingers, uh, very tough to use this thing. I don't know if you can. No, you can't. So like I was hoping like with phones, he goes like this and you can put it in. I think they should do that because if you got fat fingers, <laughs> forget about it. And then of course it wants you to confirm the password. So I'll do that right now. And let's click done. Thanks for choosing Cabo. Touch create vault to generate a new vault. Touch import vault to import an existing HD wallet. Well, uh, I'm not gonna do that. I've read to the terms of service, so I will create a new vault. For information, recovery phase is the only way to retrieve your assets. Please use re record your recovery and store it in a safe location. Do not take photos of your recovery phrase or store on a device, connect to the internet. So don't put, don't take a picture of this and store on your phone like some of the subscribers have done because you get ripped off, so don't do that. Please check your surroundings. Make sure that you're safe. Sure, I understand. And here is my passphrase. Obviously, I will uh, reset this whole thing later on, but that's what it is. So that's where I get to use my Handy dandy cards. Let's see if I have them here. Oh, there they are. Look at that. And I'm going to write these down right here. So I'm gonna do that right now and I will speed it up in a bit. And it says, hey, make sure you do this. So I'm just gonna be honest with you. I didn't write it down. I'm just gonna reset it anyhow. So who cares? So next step. Ah, son of a. All right. All right. Recovery phrase saved, and they're probably going to ask me to. Oh, look at that. i got to do the whole thing again. Well, that's pretty cool. The first three letters, it'll uh, have you jump it in. I think a lot of them do that now. I will say this. It is nice just to be able to use a touchscreen, like what we're all used to, because that's all we use these days for most of us. Some don't, but hey. And, uh, you know, it would be awesome if I could spell. All right. So look at that, and there it all is. Redone again, so we're gonna click done, and hopefully I did it right. Creating vault, please keep screen on. That's important, huh? Security verification in progress. I'm feeling lucky, and there we go. 
And here we have all the different cryptocurrencies that you're going to use. So let's take a peek. What's underneath the hood? So we've got uh, Bitcoin, Ethereum, Bitcoin Cash, Dash, Decred, EOS, Ethereum Classic, IOST, Litecoin, Tron, XRP, and Zoom. Hmm, Zoom. Yeah. So anyhow, let's, uh, let's hook this sucker up, huh? Let's take a little Bitcoin. And let's add some. And we'll click the check mark, I guess. Okay, and then it says to scan the QR code with the Kobo Vault Mobile, which we will do right now. So let's go to your phone, and we're going to open up the Kobo app on your phone. And what we need to do is we need to bind the app to the hardware wallet. You see, the hardware wallet, the Kobo hardware wallet, doesn't interact with the internet. It is a cold storage device. Nothing is connected to it. So it is a what they call air-gapped. And what you need to do to actually make things actually work is you go between the app that you download onto your phone and the hardware wallet. The hardware wallet is just there so you can sign the transaction so you can actually spend your cryptocurrency. And that's the whole thing because your private keys are contained in your Kobo wallet. So the, so the crypto doesn't, doesn't live there, just your keys. And the keys, in my opinion, are just there so you can actually uh, sign the transactions and spend your cryptocurrency or send it somewhere else. So it's kind of like just having it all locked down. So how do we actually bind it? Well, it's pretty simple. We're going to do it just like this. So first we're going to click on confirm, access our camera. Sure. Okay. And this is on the app. And now we're actually looking for the QR code. So now we're going to jump over to our Cabo hardware wallet. Okay. So here we have our Cabo hardware wallet and I want to sync this device. So I'm going to click on the menu on the top left hand corner and it's got my Cabo wallet, add hide assets, sync mobile settings. So we go to sync mobile, click right there. And that is the QR code that we're going to need to have it be scanned by our mobile app. We're going to pick it up and put it right over there. So let's put it right in front and scan it. And it should be one, two, three, binding and done. That's really all I got to do. And then we have all of our different assets that we have chosen. Now you can go back and you can chose, choose them on the Cabo hardware wallet and add in some more things. Right now we need to move on and talk about how do we actually send and receive cryptocurrency. And it's pretty simple, but we have to think of it in a certain way. So, I mean, like I said, I think of it like this with the, uh, with the Kobo hardware wallet and the Kobo app, I think of it, it's kind of like the nuclear missile launch codes from the old movies. Uh, in, the, in the films, you always needed two keys to launch like a nuclear missile strike against the dirty Russians. It was always the Russians back in the 80s, as, as I recall. And with Kobo, you need two things to make a transaction. Uh, first, the Kobo hardware wallet to actually sign the transaction and give permission. Uh, and then the mobile app, which is on your phone, to transmit the transactions to the blockchain. So uh, what I'm going to do is uh, let's see what it actually looks like. I'm going to use my Unstoppable domain account, which has all my Bitcoin, Ethereum, and other addresses. Uh, it's already attached to it. So it's going to make this very easy. So let's go check it out. Before we do that, let's send some Bitcoin to our wallet first. So I'm in my Coinbase account, and I'm going to look for Bitcoin. And I'm looking for Bitcoin wallet. And I need to send a little bit of Bitcoin over to my Kobo wallet. So let's send about $20. And then what I need right now is the QR code. So this is very simple. What I'm going to do, because I'm in my phone right now, I need to scan the code from my Kobo wallet. You can receive crypto all day long. The problem is sending it. So I'm going to click on Bitcoin, look for my address here. I'm going to click on right here. And there's my QR code. I'm going to scan that. There we are. So I have my public address in here. I'm going to receive some Bitcoin. No problem there. Let me put a note in. I'm going to put uh, CB or Coinbase to Kobo. And I'm going to click preview. And it's going to say $20 uh, to the public address. Great. Pay with Bitcoin wallet. Sure. Looks pretty good. Send now. And complete. So now we're going to wait about 30 minutes. And we'll see uh, if that transaction goes through. So to check that, we'll open up our Kobo app on our phone. And just remember, the Kobo app actually lists all your transactions, uh, what you actually have in your portfolio. And the hardware wallet is only good to sign the transaction so you can spend. So let's click on Bitcoin. And here we can see that we have received $20.30. And of course, we haven't sent anything. Here's the receive. And why is it 2030 if we sent 20? Well, it's because it took me a full day to record this video. And the price went up. Also, when you pull down, like I just did right there, it won't automatically update the transactions. You have to actually click on the cryptocurrency where you send it. So it will do that. So um, 
usually when you pull down something it actually refreshes it doesn't work here on the app so maybe they can fix that and that is it for that so that's how to receive cryptocurrency digital assets pretty simple uh, now we're going to see how to spend it and how we're going to actually or send uh, cryptocurrency from our Kobo wallet to another wallet I'm going to use unstoppable domains okay so the reason why I want to use unstoppable domains is because they tell me that this is the first and only hardware wallet where you can use a human readable um, address one like this that I own danlikes.crypto and you can send cryptocurrency digital assets just by type typing in that address instead of typing in a super long address like this or doing QR uh, uh, scan codes around all that stuff so I just want to make sure it actually works so that sounds pretty cool to me don't know if it works or not if you don't know unstoppable domains um, essentially you are buying dot uh, crypto or dot zill crypto domains and what's great about them is that like the first reason is of course you can simplify sending and receiving uh, turn in this long ridiculous uh, complex address into something like this and then of course you can also buy dot crypto domains and hold them just like they did in the 90s when they bought things like you know uh, whatever pets pets.com and cars.com they hold them for they held them for a long time and sold them for a lot of money will that work i don't know but i've got a couple and uh, hopefully it'll all work out if you need a link to it uh, here is mine it would really help me out so thanks so much but let's just take a look at the actual unstoppable domains my account and how this all works and i'm going to go to my domains i've already bought domains so there's a couple that I have, danlikes.crypto and danteaches.crypto. And what's great about this is when I click on manage, this is where you can put all your different cryptocurrency addresses. So like this one, this Bitcoin address, this is my Coinbase address. Ethereum, this is one of my uh, Ethereum wallets. I can put the Zillica, Litecoin, XRP, and also I can select uh, any additional currency, Doge, <laughs> EOS, AE, Risk, Chain, all those things, and I can just enter it in. So what's great is that instead of me going, hey, send Zillica to this address and send Bitcoin to this address and Ethereum to this address, I just say, hey, send whatever cryptocurrency you have that I have labeled here uh, to danlikes.crypto and it'll go to all those uh, different wallets and that's what I'm excited about. So to do that, we're gonna first need to open up our Kobo app on our phone and that's step one and then step two, we're gonna need our Kobo hardware wallet and this is what I was talking about as far as turning the keys for a missile launch for nuclear strikes. You, you need two things which would be the app and the wallet to spend or send crypto out of your uh, Kobo hardware wallet. So let's jump into the app first and see what that's all about. All right, so here we are on the Kobo app. And we can see right here, I'm gonna click on Bitcoin, go in there, and then these are all the transactions. I don't know why the receive isn't there. It should be uh, under all, but it's not, so whatever. And I'm gonna click on send. And here's where all the magic happens. So, receiving address, danlikes.crypto. So instead of putting a very long address in, this is all I gotta do. And it's gonna check it, and there it is. And you can see the address, 31QSUD, that is the exact same address as the one that I have in Unstoppable Domain. So how much I wanna put in here? Let's go for $15. Looks about right. And I'll just put a little memo in here so I can remind myself of what's going on. Kobo to uh, Unstoppable Domains wallet. Now I'll click return and we're going to click on send. Okay, let's take a look at that. Looks pretty good. And I'm going to click on confirm at the very bottom and check it. It looks pretty good. So now this is where uh, we have another key we have to use. So the first key has been turned. Now we need to get the signature from the Kobo wallet. So we are in the app. We need to fire up that wallet and actually sign this transaction. And after we sign it, then we have to broadcast it to the network. So let's uh, jump out of here and go grab the Kobo hardware wallet. Because remember the hardware wallet, only we need for that is so we can sign those keys. Let's do that right now. So here we have the Kobo hardware wallet. And just so you know, if you click over here, this is where we uh, add or remove things. We don't want that one. We want this one in the upper right hand corner. This is the scanner that we need to scan the code from our actual Kobo uh, app on our phone. So uh, I have the hardware wallet on my left. I have the app on the right. Let's scan this so we can actually sign this transaction. And there we go. And this is a, a better picture right here. 
And right there it says sign at the very bottom. Hard to see, but we'll sign that. And then off it goes. So now I need to uh, actually use my, my fingerprint here and it's going to go through. And now what I'm doing here is this is the next part. So this right here, let me give you a better picture of uh, what I'm showing here. Uh, we've already signed it on our COBOL wallet. Now we need to go back and broadcast this transaction. So we need to uh, scan this code. Uh, and this is the code that's being generated by the uh, Kobo uh, vault or the Kobo hardware wallet. And we're going to need to scan this with the Kobo app so it can be uh, broadcast to the network and everything can be complete. So let's do that right now. Okay, the app is open. Upper right hand corner, we're going to press on the scan button. And let's scan that QR code so we can broadcast this to the actual network. So we're going to click on broadcast. We're going to click on uh, confirm. That's going to broadcast out, broadcast successful. Fantastic. So now let's uh, check the app real quick and make sure it actually goes through in about 30 minutes or so. Okay, so we're back on the app. Let's see if that transaction has gone through. It's been about 30 minutes. Actually, it's been a lot longer. And there it is. Uh, Bitcoin looks like it's uh, now I only have $3.10 left after I had to pay all those great transaction fees. So uh, we've had it sent and the receive and send, receive, and here's all. So I've received some, I've sent some, and everything is good. All right, that's it. So super simple, right? Just a couple of steps, no big deal. Uh, just between me and you, uh, that is not the wallet for me. Uh, that is not my, not my thing. But for some people, um, that is like right up their alley and they absolutely have to have it. And that's what the whole channel is about. It's about finding, uh, not just my opinion, but what serves everybody. So that is just one of those things. The big thing about this wallet that I found uh, fascinating was that I could just put in there danlikes.crypto and send whatever I wanted to. It wasn't like I needed to keep scanning and scanning and scanning and all these different things, these hex keys, whatever else. However, there was a lot of scanning, let's be honest. So um, I think down the road, maybe it gets a little bit simpler. Uh, you just put in danlikes.crypto, send, and then off it goes. And that's just one of those things about, you know, uh, becoming your own bank. These are the things that we don't even think about that the bank really does is that they, you know, they keep things protected. Uh, they're there when something screws up as far as a transaction that doesn't go through or a wire gets gets missed. So it's just one of those things that uh, we have to deal with. Now, hopefully, and I truly believe this, is technology will catch up and make things a little bit easier. Uh, but for right now, these are the options that we have. So if that wallet interests you, fantastic. There is a link in the description. You can check that out. And that is it for today. Thanks.